so I mentioned that I would be attempting to remove very stubborn heat sinks from different memory sticks and the most notable one to mention is definitely the Corsair Dominator GT which has very difficult memory heat sinks to remove. Many people attempted to remove the heat sinks from these Dominator GT memory modules back in the day and many of them or most of them failed. Most of the time if you try to remove these heat sinks with uh, like Hode and just with some tools you usually ripped off some of the individual ICs so the memory chips from the PCB and that means that the memory stick is basically dead. Maybe you could try to reball the uh, detached memory chips but it's very difficult. We don't want that to happen. So uh, some people have been using like LN2 so liquid nitrogen so if you dip the memory stick with the heatsink attached to LN2 and it freezes completely usually the memory heatsinks drop off just fine but even with LN2 some people reported that it can rip off some of the IC so you can still cause some damage to the memory stick itself by using LN2 so uh, luckily the very same German guys who always help me out and share opinions and ideas with me so Giggles and Ground from Germany they came to me and told me that I, use, uh, that I should use turpentine to try to remove the heat sinks from the different memory sticks so I went out to a local hardware store and I bought one liter bottle of uh, mineral turpentine so uh, it's this uh, bottle over here and I used an empty ice cream box over there which now has a little bit of turpentine and there's one very bad but working Dominator GT memory module in so I will try the whole method on that stick first as it's a fully working stick and it's not a very good one I want to try the whole method on that one first before trying any other stick uh, with the same method so uh, if the memory heat sinks come off just fine using this method from the uh, Dominator GT memory module then I will do all of the other sticks using this method as well so all of the uh, dead Dominator GT 2000K7, GDX2 and also the ones the, the sticks that I got for loan for this whole uh, method so the sticks provided by Alexi from uh, Finland so uh, so let's see so I will uh, of course I need some paper towels for this purpose so let's try this whole method anyway so let's open up the uh, but yeah you definitely don't want any of the turpentine and I will once the stick is out I will close the ice cream box and I will put that aside not, not sure should we try this already Okay, so a bit of failure, so yeah, you definitely need to remove the top heatsink fins from the memory stick. So now that they are removed, let's use the plastic thingy again and try to detach the memory heatsinks. Voila! See, nothing on this side, you can see the, ep the epoxy glue on the heatsink. But yeah, no damage whatsoever based on the initial uh, side and let's do this the same thing on the other side as well yeah very easy so definitely use this method and do not use LN2 huge thanks once again to Giggles and Ground from Germany for this tip and now after this I will just uh, clean off the remaining turpentine and let it dry and I will quickly try it on some DDR3 platform and make sure that it works just fine. But yeah, so uh, Giggles said that only uh, six hours should be uh, fine enough. I mean for the memory stick to sit in the turpentine liquid. I let it sit there for like 18 hours or actually actually uh, 36 hours, sorry. But I think just like 12 hours should be fine enough. Maybe if you like sink it in the turpentine during the evening you can do this whole process in the morning or whatever when you come back from work or something like this but yeah I, I'm pretty sure this stick should work just fine so that's how a Corsair Dominator GT memory module looks like naked without the uh, fancy heat sinks so that's pretty much it
So now the naked Dominator GT memory stick is installed on the uh, channel B. So uh, let's fire up the whole rig and let's see if it turns on like properly. So let's. Okay. It is posting, but I need to use some airflow towards the uh, memory stick and uh, I will try to run the uh, known settings in uh, uh, Superpipe 32M. But yeah, seems to be posting just fine. So that's obviously very good news. So now let's see. And okay, that's a past run in Superpipe 32M. So 10 minutes, 12.969 seconds at uh, 2675 2172 command rate 1 and run rate extreme of course and this was with uh, 1.98 volts on the memory so the very same voltage the stick needed before this whole process so uh, yeah it definitely feels that the stick is working completely fine so uh, i do have some airflow towards the memory stick over there because the uh, ic's are just completely naked but yeah so uh, Based on uh, this uh, result and this experience, definitely use uh, turpentine to uh, do this whole process. Do not use like uh, hot air and a lot of force to remove the uh, heat sinks from different memory sticks. And uh, this definitely feels better option than using LM2. So uh, no issues whatsoever. And I will be uh, definitely trying this method on many other sticks as well. So I think you can use whatever turpentine you happen to find from your local hardware store. So it can be the very same uh, mineral turpentine which I used or it could be like softwood based turpentine or conifer based turpentine, whatever you just happen to find. So uh, definitely try this and if you found this video helpful then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.